Hi, I'm Karen Bowman from the content team and I'm joined by Andy Brown. Andy is executive director with uh, Strategy Analytics, looking after their enterprise and IoT research. Welcome, Andy. How are you? Hi, Karen. Not too bad this morning. How are you? Yeah, very well. Thank you. Thanks for joining our MWC short. Um, I'd love to Pleasure. hear a bit more about some of the topics that you were going to explore. Uh, obviously, we had a session that was scheduled for Tuesday uh, on the future of IoT data analytics. So if you can talk me through a bit of the work that you've been doing, some of the trends that you're seeing, that would be great. Yeah, sure. And thanks very much for, for having me on. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. So as you mentioned, I, I head up IT and uh, enterprise research at Strategy Analytics. And um, yeah, we're seeing some, some really important trends that we were actually going to cover at the session, but I'll, I'll cover off some of those now. Um, so we're really seeing IT at the forefront of a new frontier of technological innovation and opportunity, uh, really for the first time. I think last year we finally started to see the move from hype into reality uh, for IoT. And in terms of key trends that we're seeing this year, I think there are a number that, that are really important. I think the first, for the first time we're moving to hyperscale uh, IoT, we're really starting to see deployments growing rapidly mm -hmm. after a fairly slow start and more devices deployed annually than ever before. Um, there are obviously new challenges that emerge with the growth in devices, such a rapid growth in devices. And that really is around device management. So I think what we're starting to see is IT and operations starting to work together to figure out the best way to handle unified endpoint management strategies with regard to these vast number of new devices. Obviously the attack surface vector increases significantly as you have a broader number of devices and that increases the risk. But obviously um, there are enormous opportunities with IoT as well. And I think um, security, there are new security technologies emerging that, that are really going to help deal with those um, those those new uh, the growth in IoT devices, if you like, such as machine learning, such as the growth in blockchain. We're seeing going to see so many devices emerging over the next few years that the ability to automate processes without centralized authentication and storage technology infrastructure in a decentralized environment are going to be important. I think the growth in automation. Um, the growing number of decentralized networks, it's, it's absolutely, ob it's very obvious that blockchain is going to have a very key role to play there. So I think that's, that, that's going to be an interesting one. Perhaps the technology has been a bit immature for IoT roles, hasn't necessarily been, been, been vital so far, um, but I think increasingly we're going to start to see the real value in, 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 in those um, distributed ledger technologies and blockchain insecurity. Um, uh, Multi-access edge computing, MEC, um, in tandem with the emergence of 5G this year. It's going to be a, a really big factor. I think um, there are enormous opportunities there, um, you know, in terms of uh, uh, what 5G brings in terms of reduced latency to business environments, the ability to, um, uh, to offer an IT service environment at the edge of the network to speed up response times. Um, as we start to see the emergence of standalone 5G networks, um, and the ability to network slice for different kinds of IoT use cases, um, you know, massive machine type communications, ultra reliable, low latency communications, uh, uh, EMBB, we're going to start to see the real value of edge um, for IoT operations. So 5G is obviously the big one. Everyone's talking about it. It's, it's, it's really emerging this year in a big way. Um, the initial emergence is really going to be um, EMBB. Um, but as I mentioned, we're going to see um, net deployments, private network deployments really emerging. Um, I think what we've seen in IoT is that low, uh, low, low power um, is, is, has, has really played a key role for, the vast, for, for, for a vast number of IoT applications. So um, LTE, CAT-M, um, NB-IoT have been, have been really um, very well adopted and starting to become very well adopted. So we won't see lots of MNTC 5G use cases until after about 2020, to around 2022 and onwards. So um, we think early, early adopters of 5G in the IoT space are really going to be the likes of, uh, um, are really going to be around sort of private networks, manufacturing, those sort of environments. Um, once we overcome some of the barriers uh, um, to sort of 5G, we're going to see a um, stronger range across a number of verticals from 2021 onwards. Um, so I think eSIM is one of the others, I think is worth a mention. Um, 
we you know obviously was driven by the GSMA standardization initiatives, was driven by the automotive industry. We're seeing growth in consumer electronics, um, um, driving the demand for sort of a SIM that can be basically um, provisioned to whatever carrier in whatever country. And I think other other areas in the areas I look at, utilities, industrial and environment, are also looking at adopting eSIM as well. And I think IoT is going to be a real forerunner there uh, in that space. Um, and then I think sustainability is, is a big issue uh, in IoT. I think obviously it's come to the forefront of everyone's attention. But I think, you know, in terms of saving energy, um, in terms of um, uh, fighting climate change, I think it's, it's going to become, IoT is going to become a very important role, you know, in terms of monitoring, automation, conservation. I think it, it plays a very, very key role there. And I think you're going to start to see that figure into the consideration sets of not just customers, but also the vendors supplying as customers as well. Excellent. Thanks, Andy. That's really helpful. And I know that you've also done some work within strategy analytics. You've done a survey recently. Can you talk a bit more about some of the findings and what companies' attitudes are when it comes to IoT? Yeah, of course. I mean, we undertake regular end user research, looking at how companies are funding, using and deploying IoT um, in their organizations, you know, converting from, from pilots to, to, to full adoption and so on. I think in terms of what we're seeing, I mean, it, obviously we could talk about this all day. There's lots of nuances and subtleties in different industries. But one of the key things, obviously security remains the number one challenge. You know, there are several factors that remain key, right? So we, we see security and cost still remain the two key barriers or challenges in IoT. However, what we do see changing is um, it's, it's become a less significant factor over the last couple of years. What we've seen really emerge as one of the key factors is the challenge of integrating uh, multiple IoT platforms um, as you start to see operations uh, using their, perhaps using point solutions, um, perhaps where it's oper IoT has been more of an operational or business unit uh, implementation and starting to move towards a strategic part of digital transformation initiatives, um, which means that all of a sudden you've got multiple platforms that need to be integrated and that's creating a challenge um, there's a lack of bandwidth to challenge to, to manage those um, but there's also a, a challenge around uh, um, finding partners that have got strong account management and support capabilities for for customers and that's something that IoT customers deploying IoT are really looking for um, I think you also got challenges around change management in the digital transformation you've got processes that weren't connected that are suddenly becoming connected and it really highlights the importance of sort of training and communication to educate the workforce in terms of uh, the benefits of these new processes. And I think in the past, data, we talked about data. Data was really the provision of IT departments. But as you see IT, IT is continuing to find its way into new um, uh, industries, companies, and new things. So you're starting to see the, um, the merging of IT, IT and OT data within organizations. Um, and I think this gives companies that can do that successfully will be at a distinct advantage to really understand their businesses end to end. Um, so that convergence is really pivotal, but it's not easy. So I think increasingly companies are relying on their partners um, to support them with the rate of technology change, but also some of this, some of these integration challenges that, that I mentioned. And what about integrating things like IoT with machine learning, advanced analytics? Are you seeing companies doing that or are they really just at the start? Um, yeah, it's, it's at the start really. I mean, you know, AI, machine learning, I mean, they're not necessarily new technologies. I think, uh, you know, where you've got a regular, where you've got a large quantity of data or a regular flow of data, some form of intelligence is required to process those mm -hmm. in a sort of timely and effective man manner. So analytics has been around for a while. I think what you're starting to see is, is automation in those processes around machine learning um, in the cloud or the edge of the network, um, where you know it's assisting in autonomous operation, it's aiding um, decision making. Um, uh, it's automated, so it, it, it's really helping to um, take some of those uh, challenging tasks, if you like, out of the hands of, of, of users um, and really put them into, into the hands of, and really automate those processes. So, you know, you can automatically detect when something, you know, something is, 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 is amiss or awry. You know, the picture on this can be picked up very, very quickly that can be relayed via dashboards to, to someone who's, who's monitoring 
something in say a production line, a manufacturing environment, utility, wherever. Um, and I think increasingly you're going to see other technologies as well. So I mentioned blockchain and distributed ledger technologies can also potentially play a role there in areas like transparency and traceability, asset management, and so on. So I think there's lots of ways in which ML um, analytics can really help with the management uh, and the vast. And I mentioned hyperscale IoT can increase with the, the vast increase in in the amount of uh, data that's going to be proliferating. I think uh, out there as well. So yeah. The, Lots going on, lots, lots, oh, lots of m a activity in this space too. Excellent. Thank you so much, Andy. Any final thoughts to reflect uh, on this topic or anything else, any other insights that you were hoping to share as part of our session? No, I mean, you know, really just so, I mean, you know, um, just, just, just to very briefly talk, I mean, I think, I think we're a very exciting, we're in a very exciting place right now. I mean, we, you know, we've seen a lot of hype around IoT over the last couple of years, but we're really starting to see a move into um, in, into it becoming rea reality. I think as we see the emergence of 5G, we're starting to see technology that really is a great fit with, you know, for example, low latency is a really great fit for, um, it's a really great fit for industries, you know, in, in, in market in areas like manufacturing where you can almost have sub 10 millisecond latency you know, uh, and, and really have vastly improved um, operations. I think you're starting to see, you know, it, it, it starts to facilitate things like, you know, autonomous driving, you know, platooning of, of, of fleets and so on. Now we're, we're at the very early stages here, but I still think there's a lot of very exciting stuff happening here. And um, we look, uh, look forward to continuing to, to keep tabs on that, you know, this year and beyond. Excellent. Lots of exciting developments around the corner from the sound. Absolutely. Brilliant. Thank you so much for joining me, Andy. Appreciate you taking the time to be part of this MWC short. We'll be adding some more content and videos and hoping to have some of the case studies you talked about manufacturing. Uh, we're hoping to bring some of those other case studies to life through another series of these MWC shorts. Uh, but thank you, Andy Brown from Strategy Analytics. Thank you very much for joining. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me.